Hey, this is Arthur uh, with a Tezos dev update for the past week. So yesterday I was at the Zurich Bitcoin Association meetup and I presented to a great audience uh, some of the work that uh, we're doing in uh, with the French uh, dev team, but also uh, some of the community work. And I, I think it's always best when this community work is presented by their own creators. Uh, however, uh, you know, it's, it's hard to get everyone in the same place at the same time. And so I wanted to give them a shout out. Uh, and you can find the slides for this talk on their website. I think it was recorded, but they have not posted a video yet. So um, stay tuned. In terms of the development uh, in the past week, you should see more stability in the alphanet. Um, there's an operation on the alphanet called a faucet operation that lets uh, you basically request some test tokens and, and play with those test tokens. Now, the thing is, it's a free operation because by construction, you don't have test tokens, so you, you can't pay for the faucet operation. However, uh, what we found is uh, people use that to spam the network. And so right now, now we have uh, limitations uh, to five facet operations per block and also some changes in how we handle roles so that uh, we, we don't get blown up with too many roles as people create many, many uh, facet transactions. So that's uh, taken care of. And also a big change in the backend, instead of using a Git backend for Irwin, we're now using a level DB backend which is fairly fast and which avoids all the problem of eating all the inodes and having to do Git repack. The downside is that, as I've mentioned before, uh, LevelDB uh, is not concurrent. And so a lot of the asynchronicity and parallelism we have in our code cannot be exploited. So either we'll have to have um, some form of uh, concurrency uh, when accessing uh, LevelDB or write a new uh, Irmin backend. And I think that some folks from uh, Irmin can, uh, can help us with that and uh, possibly consult for the project. And that would be fantastic um, if that happens uh, because a lot of the work that a validator is doing is very IO bound. It's about finding these structures, loading them in memory, making sure that you have all the information you need uh, fairly quickly in order to, uh, to validate block. And that depends a lot on, the, on that backend. Uh, we also uh, now, uh, pay closer attention to invalid blocks. We remember when a block is uh, when a block is invalid, so we don't have to uh, revalidate many times uh, an invalid block. Um, some general uh, bug fixes, uh, cleanup of error messages, documentation. Uh, on my own side, like I've mentioned before, I've been working on uh, PVSS and seed hardening. I think I'm pretty close to merging the uh, PVSS code. So I had a, a toy model that was using a, um, a finite field. And so now uh, we have something real that's using the uh, libsec uh, P256K1 library. So that's the Bitcoin curve. Uh, so it, 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 it's a little bit uh, patchy right now because we're using for our main signature um, the uh, AD25519 curve, but we're using some Bitcoin type public keys for this PVSS. And it's a technical reason based on the fact that the uh, Bitcoin curve group is cyclic and the uh, Curve 2519 is not. There's a project called Decafs that lets you use uh, this curve as a cyclic group. And it's really cool. It's in the new Firefox. I do want to use it, but maybe V2, because right now it was just easier to use the, um, the Bitcoin library. So that's all for uh, this update. Uh, I'll be back next week with uh, more information. Uh, once again, join the Alphanet if you want more information on what's uh, happening. We have uh, a uh, good community on Reddit, uh, Tezos community, and on the Riot channel. Uh, till then, thank you.